What influences the purchasing behaviours in your household? Who has the buying power? Is it mum or is it the kids? And how do marketers respond to this? All this and more will be discussed in part one of Marketing to Kids and Teens on the show today. We're well, joining us to share their insights, Andrea Crisal, Research and Insights Director, Youth Dynamics, Sue Comba, Marketing Editor, Free for All and Founder, and Louis Cho, Author and Founder of The Brand Pilgrimage. I'm Jackie Nall. And I'm Fenley Fox, and you're watching Media and Money. Well, who has the buying power in the household and what influences our children to create a need for certain brands? Well, the question that we're after really is who has the purchasing decision in the household? But let's be, before we get there, Andrea, could you uh, paint a picture for us in terms of the stages that kids go through and what influences them? Sure. Um, in terms of children today, um, traditionally marketing was obviously just under 12. Um, we've now identified um, three different sub-segments of children. So your three to six-year-olds are obviously toddlers, um, very much going into nursery school, doing a lot of exploring, and very much traditional children in terms of what we remember from our childhood. In terms of your tween market, this is very much your seven to 12-year-old market. And in the last two to three years, we've seen a very strong split between your sevens to nines and your tens to twelves. Sevens to nines, obviously your early tweens, um, very much aspiring to be like your tens to twelves, always looking two or three years above, um, and very much aspiring to be almost like teenagers. Um, and then your tens to twelves, obviously your late tweens, um, wanting to be like your 13 to 15 year olds, um, looking into brands and fashion and music, and wanting having a lot of peer pressure um, put onto them as well. What forms their decisions in, in, in every stage? Um, there's a number of factors that obviously impact on um, children and tweens. Um, one of them obviously is very much the media, marketing and advertising. They have a strong influence from friends, especially as they get older. Um, you know, obviously word on the playground, word of mouth, um, and then just interacting with siblings and parents to some degree as well. Sue, so what would you say at what stage do kids form a relationship with a brand? I don't really know. I should imagine it depends what the brand is, really, before before you can say they've formed an association or an affiliation with a brand. But I'm just interested in what Andrea said <clears throat> about the children and their relationship with the parents, I think is, is, is very important. And where the parents are pushing the kids towards a brand, perhaps that might influence a child's decision. Um, I think <laughs> when you're marketing to children, I think essentially one needs to market to children, particularly the little ones, you need to market to them with their parents so that there's a sort of a dovetailing, I don't know if Andrea agrees with me, but I think a dovetailing with, with the marketing to the kid and the parent at the same time. But isn't that from the supposition that the dynamics of the family, the, there are, there's a parent and there's a child and they work coherently? Oh, That's not always maybe, the case? No, I suppose in a perfect world that, yeah. is, that is the ideal situation. So how do marketers work around all of this? Um, yeah. I'd say one thing in terms of children and parents, they definitely have a relationship um, between mom and child. Um, and from a marketing point of view, it's very much dual targeted marketing, especially ah. as Sue says with your younger kids. Yeah, so yes. moms make more of a rational decision, um, obviously looking at mm. price points and advertising and how good it is for the child versus children who make more of an emotional decision. Well, so Louis, they are drawn by the brand or the type of advertising. Yeah, but Louis, how does this all affect yeah, the think, culture uh, of children? Obviously one <coughs> needs... This is all relevant to yeah, the culture when, when you look at this topic, you need, you <coughs> sorry, you need to look at the cultural dynamics within mm. yeah. a particular family. Fair uh, I know of homes where children have got no say at all. Yeah. You know, if a decision to sell a house is made, they, they only discover the day they <laughs> have to move to the next house, that by the way we are moving. But we know that in Western European <laughs> homes, uh, you know, children are sat around the table and explanation is made to say, we are about to sell the house, what's your view? But in many black African homes, children have got little say. Yeah, I mean, we, we normally say children must be uh, seen, not heard. Yeah. You know, so, so how do you market to those children exactly? Well, I don't know if you, you really market to children. So it's actually uh, not even worth it. In, in the environments that, that, that I'm aware of, it is the parents that make that decision. Mm. You know, children can say, I want X, I want a pair of jeans, but affordability mm, uh, plays right. a major role in what the, the parent is going to buy eventually. But also, Louis, um, not so long ago you were on yeah. the show and we spoke about the absolute brand loyalty mm. entrenched in r rural areas where brands are asked by name, yeah. whether it's Colgate, whether it's Omo, does th that translate into the kids or th yeah. then the team market? Well, I think it's, it's, it's more the issue of trust. If you know this brand is going yeah. to, to mm. deliver on the promise, mm -hmm. 
we have limited uh, resources, financial resources in, in those environments. Right. When you make a decision to buy a pair of jeans, it is a pair of jeans that you know is going to last for a long time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as you grow, you become a teenager and you become a student. Dynamics change because as a student, you end up having some source of income. Yeah. And as you get more education, the greater respect you gain from the home. If you're studying law and your, your mother wants to, to make a legal decision, she, she's going to come to you and say, yeah, this is what I'm facing, what's your view as a, as a, as a lawyer to be? You know, so I think you earn that, that type of close relationship. But I, I, I don't know of any situation where parents sit around the table and say, we are going to buy groceries. Can you get your view on what the groceries are <laughs> going right, to be? Right, it, right. It becomes the responsibility of the parent. But see, so what happens that, when oh. the, 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 uh, the kids Go on a shopping trip Well, with you mum. Know, I think the younger children, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, if, if any of you have got small children, but just looking at what happens in a supermarket, the little children are actually pushing the trolleys Trolley. with their mum. Yeah. All right. So they're picking and they're buying, they're shopping with their parents. And I think, I think our level is by level, they're looking specifically for their brands, they're picking and mm. they're shopping. The older children, you'll see, you'll see mums with shopping lists. They're being dictated to by the teenagers. The teenagers are saying, Mom, I want this brand of shampoo. I want this brand yeah. of, of tomato sauce. And they know exactly what they, they want. They know exactly, yeah. exactly yeah. what they want. But, Louis, just to comment on what you said, I think the other side of the coin for me, and, and this is certainly my philosophy with my publication, is tweak the toe and eventually the head will nod. I don't know if, oh. if, if, if you agree with me, yeah. but if you market to a child, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that if you if you push and you, you prod and you prod, eventually he's then, going to say no. something to mum. But what about affordability? If the parents can't afford it, you're not going to really go out there. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about ridiculous, ridiculous demands, but I think if you market, if you're plugging away systematically at a child and you're brand building and you're brand building, the child's going to remember. Yeah. But, the, but the parent might think what the child wants is ridiculous. It, it, you know, it varies what you and I would think is ridiculous. So are you saying it's product it's specific, mm. Finley? Is it product specific? I, I think uh, yeah. uh, you know, teenagers grow with the brands and the products they see in their mother's cupboards as little kids. If your mother uh, becomes an Omo person, and she's trusted Omo, she's washed your clothes with this yeah. Omo for many years. It makes sense that when you become... You'll uh, use Omo, you, that you, brand Because there's a trust. Right. I mean, if we look at brands like all gold tomato sauce, yeah. it doesn't matter. You go to every household, it's there. So what you have learned from your parents counts for, for quite a lot when you move yeah. into your own household. So the marketing is done very differently to kids that are brought up in a Western society versus... I, I believe so. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you agree? You wouldn't agree. Well, it's Not very quite. difficult for me because my publication goes to children across the board. So it's very difficult for me to comment on Louis because I have, um, I, I target with my, with my literacy campaign, I target children who are from very affluent mm. households to children who are who are currently disadvantaged. Mm. So not so many rural children, but certainly township children. So it is quite difficult for me um, to, to, to comment on that. But, but the, I think there are ways that you can, you can brand build uh, across the mm. board, I, I believe. How exactly mm. would we do that, Andrea? Well, to me, what's really important is that um, from a youth point of view, whether they're children or tweens or teens, um, there, is, there are universal truths in terms of them growing up. Um, yes. And they all have aspiration of yes. some right. sort. So yes. even if they don't have the affordability, um, and I completely agree, like some families obviously mm -hmm. don't have as much money, the, what they see on TV, the amounts of exposure that they have from technology and mobile phones and what they're seeing on music videos drives that aspiration. Yeah. And that's when they're wanting some of the brands, even if the affordability is not necessarily Let's there. Let's break it down to an example. Like a township kid, how do you sell Hannah Montana to them? Well, exactly. from a... When a mother can't afford to pay the bills, need to pay for education, how exactly are you going to sell that? Well, the thing is, the, the marketing might not be direct, but the point is they might have um, friends, siblings, cousins who live somewhere else, who have a t-shirt, seen the show, have a video, go to the mm. house, get exposed to it, also want that. And word of mouth in terms of kids, tweens and teens is most important. So that if their peers have got it and they've spoken about it, that's where they're often getting what the next trend is, what the next brand mm. is to wear, um, what the next craze is, rather than from TV or something else. Do you agree with that, Louis? What about Andrea saying? You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, the research that I've looked at, uh, I'm, I'm, I would be referred to, to parents who actually, even for Christmas shopping, would go to, to the shop with a clear understanding of what the sizes are. And they will buy what they know is going to work 
for, for their budget. I think we, we can't look at this and say, let, let's just market to children. It's, it's immaterial what budgets their parents are. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a marketer, it's a waste of, of, of money. Yeah, you understand. need to target uh, households, understanding what the cultural dynamics are between the children and their parents. But I know in most homes that I've done my research in, uh, parents strive the, the purchasing power. Children are messengers, even mm -hmm. if they, were, they, were, they have to go and buy at a spaza shop they will be told exactly what to buy. If they go to a spaza shop and choose yep, what right. was not told to buy, they know they have to return it. Yeah, and even you know? for Christmas shopping, it's yeah. needs versus wants. Absolutely. It's not exactly wants, it's Absolutely. actually needs. So yeah. what you're saying is the pur purchasing power lies yeah. with the family. I think it or lies the, with the, the family. Well, with the, with the one that's, that's, that's got the... Home. The, the yes. one that, that, that's that, got the money. That got yeah. Some, the, yeah. But when that with teenager income. becomes a student and she's getting money from a bursary of contributions from other members of the family, then she has a choice on what to buy. Right. Because now she's, she's got the means and, you know, she's got the decision to buy. Can I just comment there's something about the, the, the wanting a brand or the being aware of the brand, the wanting the brand and owning the brand are three completely different yeah. issues yeah. here. But yeah. at the end of the day, we want to know who's putting down money. The money. That's where the bottom line at is. The at end the end of the day, day I mean, it's, it's always the purse always power always prevails. Yeah. Yeah. Power. It's petrol power and purse power that, pr that, 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 yeah. that, are, that dominate, but that pest of power is huge and so cannot in, be in denounced. A, what Louis is saying is like in, in, a, in a township home, they don't have that money to put down. They might desire X, Y, and Z, but that's not going to yeah. happen. But in a Western home, it might. It also it might, might not have enough. But there might be a more percent, higher percentage of where well, a kid can decide. Particularly maybe when it comes to an FMCG product. I know for a fact that my six-year-old wants Kellogg's Rice Krispies, she's going to get that because that's because what she wants. Yeah. 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 But maybe with the, the, the big ticket items, it's a different story. Yeah. But we have to wrap. Let's take this discussions yeah. for the next part.